Hi everyone, uh, this is Satyajit. Uh, welcome to my channel, Cloud Journey with Satyajit. So today we are going to discuss about what is the difference between interface endpoint and gateway endpoint. In the last videos, we already discussed about uh, what is the architecture of gateway endpoint and how to implement it, and what is the architecture of interface endpoint and how to implement it. Today, we will see the difference between them and uh, the huge cases where we can use gateway endpoint and where we can use interface endpoint. So uh, before seeing the difference, let's see the architecture diagram. So I have some requirement, like I want, there are two EC2 instance. On one EC2 instance, I have an add gateway. And another EC2 instance, uh, like the main requirement is communication from one EC2 instance will happen publicly over the internet. And another communications, it will happen via the VPC endpoint. So how it can, it can be possible? Like, let's say there is no NAT gateway. Okay, so there is no NAT gateway. If you see the diagram, there is a route table. On that route table, we as associated the gateway endpoint. Like if you remember, the gateway endpoint is route table specific. While creating the gateway endpoint, we need to specify the route table. Okay, so if we specify both public and private route table, then the route will be automatically added. The VPC endpoint will be automatically added to the route table. But if we specify only to the private route table, then it will be stick to that private route table. So here, the communications will happen from both the EC2 instance, both are in private subnet and both are having one route table. So the communications will via like from this EC2 instance, it will check its route table and if endpoint attached via endpoint, it will reach the S3. So both the EC2 instance will happen via the S3. But let's say we want, no, some EC2 instance, it will go via the internet and some EC2 instance will go via the endpoint, okay? So then in one route table, it is not possible. So the alternative way is like we can manage, we can restrict it via the route table. So if you see the below diagram, I have to create two route table. So in the two route table, one route table, I have attached the gateway endpoint and one route table, I will attach the NAT gateway. So then the communications, so everyone wants to access to the S3 bucket, but the EC2 instance one cases, it will happen via this VPC endpoint because in this route table, there is no NAT gateway. But in second EC2 instance, it will happen via this NAT gateway because there is no route into the uh, gateway endpoint. Okay, so there we can restrict. Okay, so this is not like advantages or disadvantages, but the huge cases where we can use. We want our route or different, like let's say the minimal logs or something, uh, basic things. Okay, we want over internet. Uh, then we can opt for this NAT gateway. But the overall, the gateway endpoint is private communications and cost is only the data transfer cost will be there and the private communications. So always use the gateway endpoint when you want your private communications. Don't, don't use the NAT gateway because the data will travel over the internet. Second, in case of interface endpoint, how we can restrict? If you see my diagram, while we created the interface endpoint, you need to specify the subnet, okay? Uh, while creating the gateway endpoint, we need to specify the VPC. On which VPC, then the route table. But in case of interface endpoint, we need to select the subnet. So each subnet, it's say for high availability, we need to select in each availability zone one subnet. We cannot select multiple subnet in one availability zone. So let's say we have three availability zone. So we have to, we can select three subnet in uh, each one one, okay, each availability zone one one. So what interface endpoint will do, it will create ENI in each, if we select three availability zone and three subnet in one availability zone one by one, then it will create three ENI, three elastic network interface, okay, for, for high availability. Okay, and if you see the diagram, I have selected two subnet, so two interface endpoint will be created, and both are having the security group, and finally the end will be managed by the secrets manager. Okay, so now the question is how I can restrict it. Okay, how I can restrict it? Like uh, I want this EC2 instance when it will be communicate, it will communicate via this interface endpoint, but this EC2 instance when it will communicate, it will via the route table. So how I can restrict it? So here the restriction can be happened via the security group because here there is no route table information because while we create interface endpoint, we do not have to specify any route table. So on this security group, we can only allow 
for this EC2 instance IP. Okay, so that what will happen? So when the communications will go, it will go to the ENI and then the security group, will it will check the respective IP is added or not. And then it will reach to the secrets manager. But in this case, as this route is not added, it will go over the internet if NAT gateway is attached here. So it will reach to the secret manager. Okay, so in that case, why it is being used? Because interface endpoint is chargeable. Okay, and if you attach three availability zone and like we opt for three subnet and three ENI, the cost will be very, very high. Like uh, the interface endpoint per hour basis charges is there and also the data transfer cost will be there. But in case of gateway endpoint, there will be no cost for gateway endpoint, but only the cost is associated for the data transfer. And it, it, it varies from region to region and from, uh, yeah, it's vary from region to region, okay? So interface endpoint use cases will be, uh, if the charges is very, very high, in any way, the communications will be in the private, but if we want uh, to reduce our cost, so some of the logs that right, which is very low priority and we don't uh, that is uh, that doesn't contain any uh, business related information or any very low priority data instead of sending over the interface endpoint we can send via the internet but our security and more secure data we can send over the interface endpoint okay and everything can be controlled on the security group so that the cost will be reduced and uh, the communications anyway, the secure communications will via the, the main security, which is actual data, it will go over the private network. Okay, this is the main the architecture. Let's get into the difference. What is the difference? Okay. So gateway endpoint uh, allows to connect to VPC, AWS services using a gateway. It means just route, route table. The first difference is the route table information. Okay. While creating the gateway endpoint, we need to select the route table on which route table we need to create. But in interface endpoint, we don't have to uh, select the route. We have to select the subnet. Okay. And uh, then it will create the elastic network interface accordingly. Okay. So generally ENI mean elastic network interface means it has private IP address. So it will communicate over the AWS private IP address depending on your CIDR range. Okay. And endpoints, VPC gateway endpoint are supported within the same region. Okay. It, you cannot span into different region. Okay. Like uh, your VPC is in one region and, uh, and your service is in different region, then your gateway endpoint doesn't support. But interface endpoint support multi-region connectivity. It means like, let's say your, so S3, S3 is a gateway endpoint and along with S3 also supports interface endpoint. So the use cases will be, let's say your S3 bucket is there in the Ohio region and the Frankfurt region, one EC2 instance is there and he wants to access the S3 bucket and that is possible via the S3 interface endpoint, but S3 gateway endpoint, it doesn't support. Okay. And the same, the gateway endpoint created inside the VPC and uh, we have to specify the route table and interface endpoint create also inside the VPC, but we, we need to specify the elastic network interface. Okay. And gateway endpoint only uh, DynamoDB and S3 support, but interface endpoint, most of the services support like session manager, uh, your secrets manager, uh, your uh, EFS, EC2 instance, uh, API gateway, a lot of the services it support. Okay. And, and the main approach is cost gateway endpoint there are no additional charges okay however the data transfer fee will be there okay so we need to uh, and it will vary from region to region but in case of interface endpoint for our basis charges will be there like regardless of data transfer data transfer cost will be there but the interface endpoint we need to use it right for our basis charges is there so we need to be very careful while creating the interface endpoint and as i said we can uh, uh, the huge cases will be on the security level we can restrict it so which uh, our important data we can send over the uh, interface endpoint via the eni and uh, which is very less secure and very logs related information something if you want to send we can send over the internet okay so to reduce the cost but it vary depending on the huge cases if customer not interested, they don't have to worry about the cost, but they want 
all the communications will happen privately, then you can best use the interface endpoint. You don't uh, segregate the traffic on the security group. Okay. So this is the huge cases of a gateway endpoint and interface endpoint. So uh, just I will showcase like if, while you create the endpoint, if you specify, let's say I'm giving gateway and uh, if you service, let's say, if you see the type, like all majorly supports in uh, interface, but if you see only two are the gateway, one is S3 and one is DynamoDB, but all are interface. If I select the S3 endpoint, it specify only the VPC. Let me specify one VPC and here only route table. Okay. If I say, let's say route table, that's it. I don't have to worry about anything. I just create an endpoint. That's it. The endpoint will be created and this route table automatically the endpoint will be added. But if I will go for this interface endpoint, uh, let's say, let me type it as a interface. Okay. And uh, other services are support interface. Let me go with any, in, let's say session manager. SSM. Uh, let me go for SSM and SSM support interface. While I select one, you need to specify the VPC. But if you see, there is a subnet. There is no route table. Okay. And if you have to select the subnet, uh, which subnet? And in the subnet, we have to select only one subnet. And EpiSouth one, I have two subnet, but I can only select one. And others, I cannot select it. Either we can use one. If in one availability zone, you have three subnet, then you can subnet only one. But the, as ENI is part of that uh, VPC, the communications can happen. You can use it. Okay. And uh, in uh, in EpiSouth C, I don't have any subnet. That's the reason it is showing uh, blur. But if you have, you can use it. And, uh, and other in the AP South 1B also, I have one subnet, you can select it. So now I selected two subnet. So it is going to create two ENIs. Okay. And here it will support IPV or something you need to select it. And the main major, major thing is the security group. So we need to select the security group. Okay. And everything control can be made via the security group. And then we need to create it. Okay. That's it. So the control get to endpoint, everything can be controlled via the route table. And in the interface endpoint, everything can be controlled over the security too. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it for this. And if you have any questions, something you can put in the comments. Uh, I will be checking the comments regularly and I will help you out if you have any questions. Thank you for watching my videos. Uh, thank you.